Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about linear versus nonlinear tables. We're going to look through these tables and see if we can spot. I'm going to ask you, is this linear or is it nonlinear? And we're going to have to find out. So, first thing you should ask yourself is, if I'm figuring out if this is linear or not, I should certainly know what linear is, right? Linear, of course, means we have a constant rate of change. So that means for any interval, we need the change in y over the change in x to be equal. Again, this triangle is the Greek delta. It means change in, the change in y over the change in x. That needs to be equal over every single interval. So let's check that out here. I can just go through and do all my intervals here. From negative 7 to negative 3, that is plus 4. From 10 to 9, that would be negative 1. So my change in y over change in x, that's my uh, slope or rate of change, that would be negative 1 over 4. We need each one of these intervals to be at that ratio. So let's keep doing it. Negative 3 to positive 1, that's plus 4. 9 to 8, that's negative 1. Whoop, negative 1. So that works. I have negative 1 over 4 again. Well, you got to make sure that you check them all because we'll see 1 to 7 is a positive 6 and 8 to 7 is a negative 1. That is a ratio of negative 1 over 6, which is different than the rest of the intervals. So this here would be nonlinear. Nonlinear. Let's check this next table for another example. Okay, negative 5 to negative 3, that's plus 2. Here is negative 1. This is plus 2, here is negative 1, and this is plus 2, this is negative 1. For each one of these, I have a negative 1 half interval. So this is all right, this is linear. They are all the same. That is a constant rate of change. Let's check one more that might be a little trickier for you. In this case, I have 1 to 3 plus 2, 4 to 12 is plus 8. This says 3 to 6, it's plus 3. Oh no, it's plus 3, that's different. Does that mean it's not linear? Well, let's check. I've got 12 over 24, 12 to 24, which is plus 12. Let's check these ratios. Again, we've got to do change in y over change in x. So this guy is 8 over 2, which is 4. And for this interval here, we've got 12 over 3, which is 4 as well. So these are different numbers. It's a different jump, but the ratio is the same, the rate of change. Since I only went two steps here, I had to go four here to go four for every one. Since I went three here, I had to go 12 here because I have to go four for every one. So just because it's a different jump doesn't necessarily mean it's a different rate of change. Here it's plus four. Here it's plus 16. And that would be 16 over four. That is a rate of change of four as well. So be careful because even if there are different jumps, that doesn't mean it's nonlinear. The only time it's nonlinear is if you have a different rate of change over at any interval. And make sure that you check each interval because something like this could happen. If I were to just check these first two, I would have said, okay, negative 1 over 4, negative 1 over 4. That looks good enough, so linear. But if you check this last one, that's when you realize it's nonlinear. So make sure you check them all. All right, there should be some more examples on the lesson uh, right beneath this video that you can look at. And also go make sure that you watch the next video uh, that's at the bottom of the page about completing tables so that they're linear.